Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how you make this amazing puff stitch blanket. If this is your first time to my channel, it would be amazing if you just took a moment to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. So the puff stitch blanket is very soft, very squishy, it's got lots of texture and is exactly the same both front and back. So it makes for a fab sort of throw. Now it is a bit of a yarn eater, I'm not gonna lie, but I absolutely adore the puff stitch so I completely forgive it for being a little bit more hungry than other the stitches. So for this particular blanket, it's sort of lap blanket width ish. Um, I believe I chained 124 or 126 to start. Um, I'm using up my stashes of yarn, so I'm not really paying too much attention. But the pattern multiple for the puff stitch is two. So you can make your blanket as wide or as sort of small as you would like. As long as it's an even number, you're good to go. Now for this blanket, um, I've already used three balls of uh, Ice Yarn Magic Light that I have in my stash. Um, I'm about to start ball number four. It's a pretty good size already. Let me just move it up so you can sort of see as I'm talking. Now, I think it's gonna take me about five or six sort of balls to get a full sort of adult lap size blanket. But if I'd made this a little bit narrower than I did, then I think the four balls, because of course when you buy from Ice Yarn, your yarn arrives as a pack of four, I think that would probably be just enough to do a baby blanket. But I'm very generous with my puff stitches. I like them super fat and squishy. So if it takes me six balls rather than just the four, I'm happy with that. <laughs> now just a note on um, puff stitch blankets. Um, I have found the Ice Yarn Magic Light is a very lightweight, quite loose um, acrylic yarn. It's, it's lovely and light, it's not got too much weight to it. Um, the Shapiers Colour Crafter is almost exactly the same sort of texture wise for this yarn. So again, that would be perfect yarn for doing a puff stitch blanket. If you are going to use a thicker yarn or a heavier weight or like a cotton, just be mindful that all these puff stitches could start to get quite heavy if you were using a more dense yarn. So just bear that in mind. Um, it looks beautiful in cotton, but if you were making a baby blanket, it could get a bit too heavy. So I definitely advise going for something like this, which is a sort of a looser, lightweight acrylic, which this has no weight at all when it's on my lap. So just that's one thing to just have in your mind when doing puff stitch as a blanket form. All right, so let's begin. So using Ice Yarn Magic Light, um, which is classed as a double knit yarn, it's 100% acrylic, I'm going to actually be using a 5mm hook just because I like my puffs to be quite loose and languid and going up a hook size or half a mil tends to give you a slightly more generous puff stitch. You're free of course to use any yarn and any hook size that you would like. So as I mentioned in the introduction, the puff stitch is based on a multiple of two. So as long as you chain an even number, you are good to go. So by starting with a slip knot on your hook, I'm gonna go ahead and just do an even number of chains. Because I'm only showing you a small swatch and it is a nice, easy, quick stitch to pick up, I'm gonna go ahead and chain 12. Now you're going to work your first puff stitch into the fourth chain from your hook. Now this loop on your hook does not count as anything. You want to be counting the chains hanging down. So one, two, three, and then four. So this fourth chain is where we're going to work the puff stitch. Now the trick to a puff stitch is keeping things loose and tall, because if you keep everything too low down here, you're gonna have very small angry knots rather than nice sort of languid puff stitches. You can also make your puff stitches as fat or as skinny as you like by either increasing or decreasing the amount of yarn overs that you do. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I have done my puff stitch for my puff stitch blanket. So to start, you're going to yarn over and go into that fourth chain from your hook. Yarn over at the back, come through, 
you've got three loops on your hook, but pull them up. So I'm pulling it up as tall as I can. Again, yarn over, go back into that same chain, catch the yarn at the back, come back through and pull it up. Again, yarn over, go into that same chain, catch it at the back, come through, pull it up. Then one more time, yarn over, go into that same chain, come back through, pull it up. Now you'll have a whole host of loops on your hook. You need to yarn over and we're going to draw this loop through, this yarn on your hook, through all these loops bar one on your hook. Now the trick to not getting your hook caught on all these loops is to turn it so it's facing down. So then it's going to glide through all these loops without catching any on the way through. So yarn over and pull through all bar that last one on your hook. You've got two loops on your hook. And then to finish the puff stitch, yarn over and pull through those two loops. And you should have a nice fat squashy puff stitch. Chain one, skip a chain and work a puff stitch into the very next chain. So yarn over, go into that chain, come back through, pull up a loop. Yarn over into the same chain, pull up a loop. Again, and one more time. Then yarn over and pull through everything bar this one loop here. So come all the way through, you'll have two loops, and then to finish and secure your puff, yarn over, pull through those two loops. So you're gonna keep working all the way down your chain. Chain one, skip one. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. And puff in the very next chain, all the way down. And you'll end with a puff stitch in your very last stitch. Now to move up a row, chain three, turn your work. Now you're going to be working your puffs into the chain one space in between your puff stitches. So just like before, pop a puff stitch. Chain one, skip this puff and work straight into the chain space here. Chain one, skip your puff, straight into the chain space. Chain one, work into the chain space with your next puff stitch. Chain one. And then your very last puff, because you want to have the same amount of puffs. I've got five puffs on this bottom row, and I've only got four on this second row. So I need to have five. So you work your last puff into this space in between your puff stitch and those chains that you skipped, which are acting as a turning chain. So straight into this space here at the end. So next to your puff stitch, you're going to pop your final puff stitch into this sort of chain three space. Then you have five puffs, just like in your starting row. It's chain three, turn, puff stitch into this chain one space. Chain one, skip your puff, 
work into that chain space. Chain one, skip one, puff. So the great thing about this stitch is after that first sort of setup row, you are literally just working into the space in between your puff stitches. So you don't really even need to concentrate too much. Once you've done your puff, chain one, and then work into the next sort of chain space. Chain one, and then for your very final puff, you're gonna be putting it in between your puff and your chain three, turning chain here. And that's all there is to it, to the puff stitch. You get these really pretty little sort of puff edges. I'm just gonna bring in my blanket to show you how it looks along the edge once you've done a few rows. You get this really pretty edge here and it's the same on both sides. So it almost doesn't need a border. I'm not going to be putting a border on mine because I really like these squishy puffs. So it's up to you whether or not you wanna put a border on. Totally your call. But I'm a champion of if it doesn't need a border and it's got a beautiful edge, why create work for yourself? <laughs> So that's it. It's a super simple stitch. After a while, you really get into the rhythm of it and it works up pretty quickly. Now, like I said, it can be a bit of a yarn eater, but if you are in full sort of yarn busting, stash busting mode, like I have been the last sort of six weeks or so, then you're not gonna mind and you get this really lovely squashy blanket. So I'd love to see any puff stitch blankets that you make. Feel free to tag me on social media. Um, you can hashtag me hooked by Robin or uh, my social media links are right at the end on my little end screen bit so you can find me online. And I hope you have fun puff stitching. <laughs> See you again on my channel very soon. Bye.